Hello everyone, Michael Voris here. With the speed and staggering amount of news happening these days, it's become overwhelming for the average person to keep up with all of it. And when you add in the inconsistency of people checking their social media accounts, old news often looks to them like it's new. Frankly, given the sheer volume of information that has been sifted and waded through, what is proving more and more to be the chief virtue in this environment is context. It's fine to know something, some data point, but so what? What does that mean? What are the consequences? What's the actual story that matters, not just a random, again, data point? Given the amount of misinformation by the Marxist globalists, coupled with the current political and cultural environment, Church Militant is deciding to vote, devote more resources to this critical aspect rather than simply reporting. We'll, we'll, of course, continue telling you what's going on, but we're going to place a much heavier emphasis moving forward on what it all means, how it all fits together, and what it might mean for you. Even popular so-called conservative websites that try and do this kind of thing often miss the boat. They get the importance of a story as a story, but as our blessed Lord said to the Samaritan woman at the well, they worship a God they do not know. There is much more to these stories than they even realize because they don't look at it from the spiritual perspective. So, as we have done from time to time in pausing production of various shows, while we make way for what is more needed at a given moment, we're going to be taking a break from our regular evening news so we can concentrate more heavily on the impact of what's going on, what it all means, and why you should know. We're going to be breaking down the day's events from a particular Catholic perspective, and we're going to be doing it in a much faster manner so we can get the info and context to you much sooner. These changes will lock Church Milton into its rightful place as the conversation starter and leader, driving the narrative, keeping you not only informed, but also most importantly, understanding the story. To that end, we're going to be rolling out, beginning today, a series of new programs, which next week will also include, remember this, our very popular The Download, which we paused production on a while ago, and we are now bringing back. All of us look a little younger in the video. So we're happy to introduce you right now to the first of these new programs, Rome Dispatch. The 86-year-old Pope's heart condition is far worse than the Vatican is letting on. Brad Eli here from Detroit with Rome correspondent Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules. Greetings from Rome, Brad. You know, what, what are we hearing about the heart condition now? This sounds pretty serious. An 86-year-old Pope and his heart isn't all there. What do you hear? Brad, one of Italy's top cardiologists, uh, Dr. Franco Romeo, who until a few days ago was head of the Italian Society of Cardiology, says that he thinks Pope Francis may have suffered what he calls an atrial fibrillation. Okay, now what, what exactly is Romeo saying? Well, this is a quote from him. He says, instead of a normal cardiac rhythm, a series of uncontrolled and irregular stimuli start from the atrium in the heart with a frequency exceeding 400 beats per minute. And uh, uh, Romeo says that a respiratory condition may be linked to this very serious heart condition. Wow, so if the trads are saying, you know, the Pope has no heart, I guess they're kind of in a right in a way. Uh, you know, an 86 years old and his ticker's not ticking the way it should. Uh, it, this is looking more serious, like we may be having a, a papal conclave coming up and not too far in the future. Well, the papal conclave is not so much of concern as is uh, the Vatican spin on the whole thing, because the Vatican tells us that he was suffering from viral bronchitis. And I spoke to a top Catholic doctor who asked for anonymity, and uh, the doctor said he was absolutely astonished that a person with a viral bronchitis, which is highly contagious, would be allowed to expose himself to children. Well, yeah, let's go into that for a minute. What are all the to-doings that the Pope did while he was in the hospital? 
Well, he was, of course, chomping on pizza, uh, meeting children, uh, uh, hugging a woman, you know, a woman who had lost a baby, which was, of course, a very compassionate act. But then he went on to baptize a baby. And we now have a canon lawyer from Germany telling us that he broke all the liturgical rules while doing this baptism. Well, you know, with all the rules being broken, there's one thing. We just came out of this whole uh, COVID era, and you would think that all this social distancing and all that type of thing would still apply. I mean, you, you get sick for more things than just COVID. So uh, it seems like there's not exactly the same emphasis on uh, follow the science regarding all this. Well, indeed, because, uh, you know, the Vatican had insisted that people not only wear a mask, but wear an N95 mask. And Pope Francis was not wearing a mask at all. Uh, he went on to baptize this baby. And uh, canon law says that unless a child is in a baby is in imminent danger uh, of death, the baby must be baptized, not just in a church, but in the baby's parish church. And it is obligatory for the uh, liturgical right of baptism to be followed, which Francis didn't do at all, just tossed the rules to the wind and said a prayer and poured water on the head of the baby. Now, let's let's hold off on the canon law for a minute. I'm just letting it sink in for a minute here. You said 400 beats or Romeo said 400 beats per minute was the heart rate of the Pope? Well, he said that uh, a frequency exceeding 400 beats per minute. Now, this is what uh, the problem with uh, this sort of irregular arrhythmia uh, is. And it is, uh, it is not uh, an unusual heart condition, Romeo says. Uh, lots of people in Italy suffer from it. I couldn't imagine having a heartbeat 400 beats per minute not flying apart, but... Uh, let's let's go back to the canon law issue here for a minute now with all the Vatican saber rattling about how trads need to obey Rome regarding their use of the TLM this traditional Latin mass it seems the Pope broke a few of these liturgical laws while he was in the hospital does that all jive well, he did indeed and this is at a time when uh, Cardinal Arthur Roach who is the head of uh, the Dicastery for Divine Worship, is telling the Germans uh, that they have broken, you know, thrown the rules out of the window by endorsing uh, baptism and preaching homilies during uh, the mass by lay people, lay men and lay wo women. And of course, this is now widespread in Germany and in Switzerland. Well, you know, following liturgical law is fine, but where's the clamp down on this on the, the, the same-sex blessings, you know, that was the headline here. It seems like the screamer that if they're going in so hard on these other lesser liturgical abuses, if you will, how, you know, it just makes it all the more dramatic that they're not reining in the so-called synodal way in Germany on the same-sex blessing that they've been uh, propounding. Well, well, they would respond and say that the Vatican did issue the Congregation for the Dicast uh, for the uh, for uh, the CDF uh, Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, as it was then known, did issue a very strong statement saying that God cannot bless sin. Of course, there was no a disciplinary action when priests and bishops for two whole seasons went on a rampage, a, a literal binge, blessing same-sex couples all over Germany. So yes, uh, you know, uh, it, it's very strange that Arthur Roach is now coming up and saying, uh, coming out and saying, well, you can't let lay people preach from uh, the pulpit or baptize children. And he's sort of going into all the uh, canonical niceties and nuances of that. But what about the same-sex blessings? It almost seems like uh, the Vatican and Pope Francis himself is letting this go in through the back door. Yeah, you know, Rome's intervention, if they didn't do anything, that would be one thing. But Rome's intervention in the synodal way in Germany uh, on, this, on the baptisms and preaching of the laity, it just makes their silence on same-sex blessings all the more deafening. Uh, I really, uh, really imagine that Roach would come out stronger on the complete obedience when he himself is the one that's just banging the drum that the trads all have to get in line. You know, the young priests all have to have special permission from the Vatican to say the TLM and you can't use a parish 
church, even if your bishop has green lighted it, they got to check with Rome too. I mean, there's quite a clamp down in liturgical obedience from Roach. And here he just kind of lets this whole uh, uh, same sex blessing thing just go under the rug. Well, uh, I preach, you practice. That seems to be Roach's addiction. Well, Dr. Jules, I really appreciate having you on with uh, Boots on the Ground at Ground Zero. Thank you very much for coming on today and, and getting us all uh, acquainted with those stories. Thank you, Brad.